Okay, so welcome to this next video on bacterial persistence. Right, okay, so we've seen how penicillin antibiotics, they work by killing uh, cells which are dividing. But if a cell is not dividing, then it's not susceptible to penicillin because if it's not dividing, it's already got its cell wall all produced. It's already got all of these peptide crosslinks between the peptidoglycan strands. So it doesn't need a functional peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzyme and therefore inhibiting the peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzyme with a penicillin antibiotic um, it isn't going to have any effect on it. It's only going to kill these cells that are dividing. So, let's say we have a population of uh, E. coli bacteria. Okay, so we've got lots and lots of E. coli on this plate. So let's say this is an agar plate, which we are keeping our, our bacteria on. So this is an agar plate, and we have got E. coli on here. So E. coli is a gram-negative bacterium, so it's got two membranes, so I'll just draw it. It sort of has a... Um, um, a rod shape like this. It's got an inner membrane, which is actually its cell membrane, and then it's got a thin little peptidoglycan cell wall, which I'll um, draw red because it stains gram negative and therefore appears red down the microscope. Okay, so here's its thin little peptidoglycan cell wall in the periplasmic space, which is this space between the inner cell membrane and the outer cell membrane, which I'm drawing here. Okay, so here is our E. coli, or in full, Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli. Right, okay, um, so on this plate, some of the E. coli bacteria will be dividing very rapidly. So some of them will be undergoing uh, rapid division. Okay, so let's say this one here is undergoing rapid division, i.e. it's continuously dividing, so just splitting into two and some of them will not. So in any population of these bacteria, some will be dividing very rapidly and some will not. So let's say this one is not. Now, if we expose this agar plate to a penicillin antibiotic, or indeed any other beta-lactam antibiotic, um, it will kill these ones that are dividing rapidly. So all of the ones that are dividing rapidly will uh, die, and the ones which are not dividing rapidly, the so-called persisters, because they're going to survive, they will not die in response to the uh, penicillin. And this is why, because they've already got a viable cell wall, so they do not need a functional peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzyme. It's only needed when you're synthesizing new peptidoglycan. And if you're not dividing, then you're not really needing to synthesize. You don't really need to synthesize new peptidoglycan. So you don't need uh, this enzyme to be active. So this persistry is going to be unaffected by the penicillin. And this is why, if you do this classical experiment where uh, you expose a colony of bacteria to penicillin, what will happen is you'll get the population going down like this. So if I'm drawing... Uh, drawing the um, population of bacteria on my agar plate on the y-axis, and I'm doing it against time. And let's say at time zero, I exposed my colony to penicillin. So I added in the penicillin. And for an example, let's say we exposed it to ampicillin, uh, which is an example of an amino penicillin, which are quite effective against gram-negative bacteria. Okay, uh, because they're effective at getting through the porins in the... Um, in the um, outer cell membrane. So porin is basically a, uh, a protein which allows things to move through that outer membrane. And one of the drugs, um, ampicillin, uh, is capable of getting through that membrane. Okay, I'll get capable of getting through the porin and into the periplasmic space, which is, of course, where it needs to go, because the penicillin binding protein, or the peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzyme, that is in the, amongst the um, peptidoglycan cell wall, which is within the periplasmic space, so it needs to get past that outer membrane. Okay, so if we expose our bacteria to penicillin, population is going to fall very rapidly, but it won't go to zero. It will stay uh, like so. It will never get to zero. You can never kill all of the bacteria, basically. Uh, and the, this low level that remain there, these are the persisters, basically. These are these bacteria which are not being killed by the uh, antibiotic because they are not dividing, basically. And what we want to know is 
well, what's the molecular mechanism of this? Why do some E. coli divide very rapidly and then others are not dividing at all? And basically what happens is these bacteria and these persisters have effectively halted all protein synthesis occurring within them, basically. And that's why they're not dividing, because if you stop protein synthesis, then you can't divide. Because in order to divide, you need a huge number of new proteins to be synthesized, because effectively, you have to double the amount of proteins you have, because you're going to become two cells. Uh, so if you block protein synthesis, you block the ability to divide. And the, in these persister bacteria, what has happened is they have found a way to block protein synthesis. Okay, so let me outline the mechanism that we, well, what we understand of the mechanism by which um, these persisters have, um, have done this, and we'll do that in the next video.